Hey there. One of the things that I've always had a problem with is filming my GoPro with the auto mount. It works good with the suction cup to hold it onto the car or the scooter or the, the window or whatever I'm filming with, but then I'll, I'll tend to use it as a hand, handheld filming device for my GoPro and running around. Uh, the, the footage isn't stable and uh, it's, it's hard to, to hand it off to someone and maybe it's not, it, it's not configured for the hand or whatnot. So there's a better way and you can print that thing and put your GoPro on it. Stick around, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so you wanna get started and you wanna print this thing, right? Let's do it. First off, you need to download the files from Thingiverse. I have the website up. It's Thingiverse, it's Thing719230. It's by some guy named Thumber, Thumber? Thumb, thumber, thumb, thumber, I don't know. Thumber, sure, thumber. And here it is. And here's the file, as you can see. Sure, uh, we can download it. I've already downloaded it, and it's on my hard drive. So now we need to load it into the slicing program. I use a program called Simplify 3D. Let's import the files. The grip, the bottom, the mount, and the top bar. Oh dear. Okay, there's a few problems first of all. First of all, um, it looks like everything is kind of laying in a way that wouldn't make it suitable for printing. Uh, as an example, this piece here, we should probably stand it up. If I double click and if I change the X, I can do that. And the center and arrange button over here attempts to center all of the items on the build plate and then arrange them in a way that makes them fit for printing. But we're not done yet. As you can see, these things are off the build plate completely. Uh, so we need to adjust their coordinates. Let's see, oh, we need to do that for that one. And we need to do, oh, wrong way again. Boy, I suck at mouse. Let's hit the button. All right, these are laid out better, but they're still not on the build plate, and it looks like it's because this is in the way. There we go. Now when I hit center and arrange, you can see it's much better. Uh, everything fits, everything will print. Um, one thing to remember, uh, you'll need two of these. So to get two, you select it, you go models, you go duplicate, and you say the number of copies. I just want one. Set a range. That looks good. Um, for printing it out, let's see. I printed in PLA. I did the auto configure for medium quality. I set my extrusion width to 0.45 and a retraction distance of 3.5 millimeters. That's a mouthful. All right, let's see what it's going to give us. Almost there. There we go. Simplified 3D shows us how the tool head will move while it's printing the parts. So as you can see, it builds it up. It's got a good infill percentage. Um, one thing I notice, you'll see that it's going to try to span this distance um that's a bit of a <laughs> that's that's a bit much of a of a distance to span without some support so let's go back edit our process and generate support prepare to print here we go as you can see it added some supports here in the handle Let's see, should have put it here in the handle as well. And then we have support here and we can verify by bringing it down. There we go. So as it prints, it prints the support and sure enough, there we go. Okay, it says it'll take 11 hours. This says it'll take 11 hours to print. I guess that's not too bad. We can just set it to go overnight. Um, 
I'll save it off to disk. And I'll call it uh, GoPro mount. I'll save out the G code and send it to the printer. Now that the printer is done with the parts, we can pull the parts off and put the thing together. One problem, um, it was really stuck. The pieces were stuck down pretty hard, so I had a breakage. One of the things you always have to be worried about is your on your 3D printer is the, the pieces that you print stuck to the build plate. You have to be very careful when you take them off. Plastic is strong, but it can be brittle when you apply enough force, as I did. So I, um, I trashed that part and I reprinted it. Thankfully, it didn't take very long. So sure enough, I've got my, my upper and lower bracket. I've got the piece that holds the GoPro, and I've got the two uh, handlebars. Uh, this should be cool. All right, let's put it together. Let's see what happens. Okay, as you can see, I've got the pieces laid out here. Um, I also have my handy dandy yield nose pliers. Got my Swiss Army knife just in case. And I couldn't find my Allen wrenches, so I bought one. Uh, you'll also, as the, as the website says, you, you need the, the four, what were they? They were the, the M850 bolts and three nylon lock nuts. Um, I found M845s, they seem to work. I tried them out in the store. Um, we'll see if it works. Uh, I, to be honest, I, uh, I haven't put it together yet. I was gonna try and test fit everything just to make sure it worked before the video. Um, I, I didn't have time. I didn't have a lot of time. So this is, um, this is fresh. Let's see what happens. Um, okay, first up, the, the, uh, the lock nuts, they slide into these grooves. Oh, that went in easy. That's good. Let's try this one. Do you see that? Let's see. There's little grooves here. Let's see if it fits. And it's in. You kind of see it? Rattle it around. Dip to the other one as well. Let's see. You can see they kind of they're held in with a little bit of force from the sides. Okay, that one's in. All right, first one holds at the top, that just goes in. And then dry fit, and spin it for a little bit. All right, it's in. This is deceptively easy. That went in as well. Okay, that's dry fit. Last two pieces. Ooh. All right. Where am I? Let's see if I got that locked in there. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um. I put the nut in upside down. See if I can get that out. There we go. Oops. I guess you gotta be careful of that too, huh? Go in. All right, I'll get that one. Oh, much better. Much, much better. Let's see. And. Uh, oh, don't let that spin. Uh, all right, here comes here comes the hard part. So uh, everything you see here, the, the metal, it has to twist together. The nylon lock nuts need a little bit of force. And this is just plastic. I printed using PLA plastic. So there's, there's not a lot of strength there. If I tighten it down, it may slip. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's holding, oh, slipped. All right, I thought about this. I'm gonna use my Swiss Army knife and if I put metal to one side, it should give me enough strength to tighten it. Wish me luck. So you can't really see that. All right. 
Let's see if I can do this. That sucked. Uh, it's been an hour since 45 minutes, half hour, I don't know. Time moves slow. The problem is with these lock nuts and that bolt there. So when that goes in, it goes against the nylon interior and it holds it in and it locks it into place. The problem is you need a lot of force on the outside of that nut to hold it in place so that this can go down. Plastic's not a good... <laughs> plastic doesn't give a lot of force and if it's metal versus plastic, the metal seems to win. So what I, what I did is I carved out the hole a little wider. So there's the normal one. I carved out that hole a little wider and I was able to grip it with, let's see, I was able to grip this with some needle nose pliers and hold it in place. So now, mm, it's good to go. Let's keep going. All right, the next, the next step, here's the piece for the new bracket that will hold the GoPro. What we'll do is we'll take out this screw and that nut and reuse it in this piece. It's got a recessed area to hold the nut and it fits. Let's get the GoPro on there. So I think it goes that way. Moment of truth, right? Here's the bracket, here's the GoPro. Let's see if it fits. It's a tight fit, but. Ha <laughs> ha! There you have it, a a decent bracket for the GoPro that gives you a, a good amount of grip. Hey, we'll get some footage with this tomorrow and see how it works. Go, 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 go! Where are you going, Sid? Don't let it fall out of your basket if you get something. No. No. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Spillage. How do I get this? I don't know. How do you get it? Get it, get it, get it. Come on. Whoa, right here. Whoa. Whoa, Whoa. Another one. Oh. What's it? Wiggle it, come on, hit it, hit it, come on. Uh oh. Daddy! Uh, put everything in, it's okay. Put everything in your bag, just like that. Don't put it in the egg, just put everything in. No, you didn't go too far down in there, did you? Someone did, yeah, watch out for poopies. So, as you can see from that footage, uh, it's Easter. I got to film the kids running around, getting eggs. Uh, I had a good time. 
the GoPro frame worked really, <laughs> it was really good. The, uh, the frame itself is super easy to use. And when I want to point it at a kid, I stand behind the frame and I just kind of look like this. And then I've got, I know the camera's pointed in the right direction and I know the camera's focused on my subject. If I want to one hand use it, it's really easy from either hand. And if my subject is moving, I can, I can pan back and forth. I can tilt it up and down. I can hold it lower. I can hold it higher. Uh, this, this frame is really functional and I could see this being used not just for GoPros, but if, if, um, if you have an iPhone, you like to do iPhone video, an iPhone video mount right there would be, would be really beneficial. Um, okay. So now that you've seen the footage with that in mind, we have to, we have to go through the good and the bad. Let's get started. The good, there's plenty of good. There's plenty, plenty of good things about this frame. It, um, the, the dimensions are perfect. This is the, the, the hand grips are, are, are the perfect size to, to hold on to just right. The, the texture on the grips um, makes them comfortable to hold. The, the top and the bottom bar are very sturdy. They don't bend or flex much and it's very light because it's made out of plastic and it's not, I printed it at 20% infill, so it's, it's not, it's not heavy, not in the least. The heaviest part on here is probably the GoPro. Um, uh, it's, it's also, it provides very, very stable footage. The, the stability of the footage or the stability in, in, in holding it and getting good footage is, is fantastic. I was able to, as you can see, uh, hold it very still and follow a subject. And even while running, I, it wasn't perfectly stable, but it, but it still provided a much more stable base had I held the GoPro with one hand. And uh, I've never had good footage turn out with holding the GoPro with one hand. Um, uh, finally, it's, it's very functional. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, <clears throat> excuse me. It's a, it's a functional rig. It, it is, I, I would consider it now, now that I have this, I would consider this to be an essential piece of equipment in my camera bag. This, this, I wouldn't want to film with a GoPro handheld without this thing. However, now that I've used it, uh, a couple things came through that, 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 that really brought me to a decision and I'll get to that decision in a bit. Um, one of the problems is the bottom isn't flat. If you see these two, these two things right here aren't flat. You can't set the camera down like this. You have to lay it on its back or on its front. Obviously that doesn't work too well. Laying it on its back works, but then you're just filming the sky and that's boring. Um, if you could actually set it down flat, it would be very useful if you needed to set it down and then run to be in the shot. Or if you just wanted to set it flat and, and, and record something, it would be very useful if, if you could do that. And unfortunately with this rig, you cannot do that. Um, the other, the other terrible thing about this was, was how crazy hard it was to build. Um, the nylon lock nuts are metal and obviously they are using the pressure of plastic to, to tighten, um, metal versus plastic metal wins. I don't see. And I also, I don't, I don't see why I had to do a screw here and a screw here. Why not get a screw that went all the way through with one lock nut or some sort of attachment device here? It would seem that would be a, a better choice. And then you're, you're tightening external to the frame. Um, that said, with that, with that, with the good things and the bad things, this is. Uh, if I was to grade this, I would give this a solid B. Um, if you, if you take into consideration the 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 build, and and how hard that was, uh, that's what that's what brought it out of the A range. The it's it's incredibly useful. I wish I wish I could be printing these all day and giving them to friends because they would find that useful. Um, but with the drawbacks, I've, I've decided to build my own. I, I, can, I can design something similar to this in my 3D software. I can give it a flat base and I can make the attachment points a little bit easier. Plus I can model in a different type of connector that will allow more devices. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that front. Eh, not too shabby. On a side note, I want to thank you guys for watching. This is the first video on the 3D Printing Nerd channel. I hope to bring you a lot more videos. I hope to, 
I hope to print a lot more things and I hope to, to show you how to make things to print. It's, it's a lot of fun and this is just the start. The, the GoPro handle is gonna be the first thing of many things that we print. So thanks, so subscribe. If you get a chance, um, I'm sure I'll put some buttons over here. Maybe, maybe? I don't know, I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. There'll be lots of links in the bottom of the video though, showing you where to get the stuff I have. Thanks again.